What's up, everybody? Jason here for JaspiesCaseBreaks.com. 2022 Bowman's Best Baseball just sold out. This is an A-Box break. Picker Teams number 8. And another case down, guys. We do have Picker Teams number 9 and 10 on the website. Those have a chance to break tonight as well if you guys sell it out. Jeremy with the A's, though. I feel like after my lunch break, though, I think by then we'll probably have that Immaculate done. I know we have one RMB sold out, but no need to really do the randomizer yet just because we still have the second one to sell out. But that's probably our next break. After my little lunch break, uh, down to six left there. And then we still have another Immaculate as well. This, this time it's just a random team, though. Pigskin's getting a little closer, seven and 20. Uh, like I said, more Bowman's best on the website. 15 left and five star, maybe. Cup hockey's down to 11. I know, that's one thing they were talking about, Jeremy, is that, yeah, they could have lost, but, I mean, oh well. I mean, that's, it's funny, obviously. You don't want to throw games, but at the same time, you know, obviously that benefits you big time. But I think, honestly, the Texans going into this offseason were probably like, look, I, if Strout does come out, because he took a little bit longer to announce, and, of course, Bryce Young's coming out, I think th I think they're content with either one of those guys. I, I think for them, it's just like they're hoping that the one they really like maybe doesn't get picked, but I think they're happy with either or. And then you have someone like Anthony Richardson, obviously, that has come out and kind of shined and... A lot of people project him to be number one overall pick, too. So I think for the Texans, they, they got options to that, too. I think they also have multiple first-rounders as well for the, from the Deshaun Jackson or Deshaun Watson trade, too. Yeah, Chad, that happened, uh, what, like around 2 o'clock? Probably when I started, around 3 o'clock maybe? Yeah, I'm going to have to start calling you Adam Shepard. I know, right? I only seen it on TV. I was like, whoa. Well, actually, let's take a look, actually. the NFL draft order here so right now currently you have Carolina who moved into number one right so you know they're taking a quarterback right Houston is taking a quarterback unless they shock us but I really doubt it they're, they're taking a quarterback Arizona is an interesting one they were talking about earlier because Arizona obviously is not taking a quarterback they have Kyler Murray they could take somebody top three pick right but there's a lot of uh, chitter-chatter they were talking about earlier that Cardinals may move out of that number three spot. Move out of that number three spot. And then the Colts, I would assume, probably take a quarterback, right? So, yeah, maybe three out of the top four. Seahawks, obviously, are not taking a quarterback. They might take a lineman, somebody to help their offense out or defense, right? Same thing with Detroit. I think Detroit's committed to Goff. I don't think they take a quarterback. Raiders is interesting because Raiders obviously can. And so can the Falcons potentially. Right? So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. I think it all depends. I mean, imagine if, if the Cardinals trade out of that slot and maybe let's say, I, I don't know, the, the Raiders or the Falcons move in. Maybe even the, I don't know, Titans maybe? I don't know. One of those teams move into the top three? I mean, there's, there's a good chance that it could be... Top three quarterbacks. I think the one thing is that Anthony Richardson has really uh oh, is that, did I say Anthony Richardson? Yeah, that's his, that's his name, right? The quarterback from Florida. He's got so much buzz that he could even be like number one. And that'll force some teams uh, you know, out of the top ten to want to move into the top ten. I mean, the, the Seahawks could take a quarterback, technically. I mean, Geno signed for, what, a four-year extension? Four or five years? I mean, I don't think you waste a top-ten pick on a backup quarterback that's going to be your backup for four or five years. But unless, obviously, Geno declines in, like, two years, 
then you bring in. Obviously, you already have Richardson in place. But uh, I mean, it, it could be they, they could draft a quarterback in the later round, maybe second round. I mean, kind of the way the Eagles did with Hurts. I mean, think about it. I think the Eagles, at the end of the day, were probably a little skeptical and opti- uh, not optimistic on Carson Wentz staying healthy, being that guy he was in 2017. So the Golden Draft hurts with a lot of big upside, and he turned out to be pretty pretty strong. And obviously they had to pay Wentz a little bit, but since Hurts was on his rookie deal, that was okay. Yeah, I don't know what happens to the Georgia guy. That's interesting, too. Interesting. I don't know. He still is a top five talent, but... You know, off the field can ruin a lot of things, man. In your little town here, Wisconsin, still on the Super Bowl buzz. He got drafted by the Chiefs last year, and he got... Nice! That's sweet, man. I I love it when it's like that. Like, a dude from a small town or a small city. Suburb, you know? And, uh... Obviously, to, to the town that he's like a fight, you know, celebrity hero, and then they end up winning like a big championship in a sport. That's awesome, dude. How do you feel about that Geno signing, though, Chad? You kind of knew that was going to happen, right? Jumped on the bus. No, I might have to check out that video, Jeremy. I'll look him up. But yeah, that's awesome, dude. Yeah, I would feel the same way, Chad. I mean, look, he can win you guys some games. There are times where he's going to do really well. There are probably times he's not going to do so well. But at the end of the day, you know, I think for the amount you paid him, it's not like you paid him a gazillion dollars and overpaid for him he signed what I'm sure a lot of other teams probably would have offered and like you said I mean he could be the bridge quarterback right you, you have him for a couple years and you know like I said maybe not this year maybe next year you draft a quarterback and kind of start thinking about what's life after Gino I mean unless he just continues to just have great seasons and then you don't have to worry about a quarterback for the next three four years I mean, I don't. I wouldn't say he's the answer either, James. But you know what? I mean, I think the Seahawks are all in on him, and they, they, they feel like as long as they have a capable quarterback, just think of like the 49ers team, right? Yeah, but if you have a capable quarterback and that can get the job done, don't have to be a Patrick Mahomes. You know, as long as you just, you know, stay healthy. Don't commit turnovers. Make good decisions. I think that's you can win football games. I mean, I think the 49ers kind of proved that. Now, of course, the 49ers are very unfortunate this year, right, having all their quarterbacks get injured. But their team was so good around them that they kind of didn't really need a quarterback to do so well. Just, just, just do your job, right? Don't, don't, uh, don't turn over the ball, and you know, make some plays. So, I mean, I think that's what the Seattle Seahawks are kind of going for. Like I said, unless 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 Gino goes like crazy, uh, unless Gino goes like crazy, 
uh, does crazy bad, then of course, like I said, those those contracts that they sign, they can easily cut them and move on or trade them just like they did, like you know, Eagles with Wentz and stuff. So I mean, I don't know. Of course, man, I, I get you, but they're not paying top tier money for a top quarterback. I think Gina, I don't know how much Gina they're getting paid, but I don't think it was more than like what thirty five mil, thirty. So, like I said, I, I think it's an easier contract to get out of if it doesn't work out. But I think they rather have a guy that knows the system and, like, like Chad said, can get the job done. You know, serviceable the way Jeremy says. And then let's 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 gather some pieces around him and the offense and defense, vice versa. I mean, because I don't think a lot of people expected the Seahawks to do okay and make the playoffs this year. I mean, I'm sure minus Seahawks fans in general. Angeles to for the A's. Elijah Green. Green to 99. Julio! For the Mariners, that's a little Tristan right there. To 299. <clears throat> Noel. Yeah, I mean, I, I I don't think it would be a horrible decision to draft a quarterback just to be safe, right? Because you have, obviously, Denver's pick, top five, and then you have your own pick at 20. And I want to say, do they have Denver's first-round pick again next year? I don't know. What's up? Yeah, I'll message him and I can message him. Yeah, and then let me know and I can send it to your archive and you too. It doesn't matter. Yeah. All right. See you later. Thank you. Cavadas. James Wood. I mean, if they if they for sure had Denver's first round pick next year, that'd be pretty strong too. But I have a feeling Denver will be much better next year. So. I mean, I think you're right. I think this might be the time to use that top five pick and get a quarterback and just develop him for the next year or two, if that's the case. I mean, maybe he maybe he beats Geno. I don't know. But I don't think so. I think if you pay Geno that money, you're not going to really kind of want to have any controversy. But I guess we'll see. Mikey Romero for Boston. Hunter Franco Silver. Suzuki. For sure. I, I think I, I believe that too. I, I believe that too. I, I think that's something that should happen more often. It's funny, right? Because as good as Mahomes is. He's one of those rare quarterbacks that was drafted in the first round that actually sat a whole year. You know? Which doesn't happen often now, right? I mean, they kind of want you to plug you in and play now. And some quarterbacks got it. Their rookie year, some of them don't look so well. And I feel like they ride you off after year one, depending on how well you do or not. Alright, next one. Roderick Arias. Nice one there for the Yanks. Gunner Bryan. Joshua Baez. <laughs> yeah, Gino sat down for a while. I mean, you can't say Gino didn't have chances. I mean, even though he was drafted like in the second, third round for the Jets, he still had a chance to, to be the guy, and he did play. It just didn't work out for him, honestly. Two out of 50? I, I don't know. I mean... He looks so good in college, just as other players do. And I remember watching him because I was a big West Virginia fan, just rooting for him because I remember all those weapons they had at one time in West Virginia. And then previously, before that, I used to love Pat White. Pat White was such a good quarterback for West Virginia, too. But, you know, him coming out in 2013 instead of 2012 kind of hurt it because 
he had such an amazing junior year, I think, that if he would have came out, even though that draft class was loaded with, like, RG3 and Andrew Luck and those guys, he still would have been a first-rounder because he had an amazing year. That year he came back for it, it didn't really look so good. Palmeiras. It's kind of just like Matt Barkley. I don't know if you guys remember Matt Barkley from USC. His junior year is so good. Probably would have been a first-round pick, but he decided to come back because they wanted to win after that sanction. And it did, First of all, they did not win anything. And second of all, he got drafted by the Eagles in like the third round. I like Thomas, but I think he's doing pretty well. He's still in the league, what, 10 years now? I think his family came from money already too, so he's fine. <laughs> Trey Sweeney. But decisions like that can be pretty haunting, I feel like. Wander Franco. Jonathan Kais. And how about another Wander Franco? To one ninety nine. Justin Harris. And a Anthony Gutierrez Green to 99 for the Rangers. Showtime for the Angels going to Tristan. I want to get one of his die cut autographs. Harry Ford for the Mariners. Joe Ryan. Yoswar Garcia. For the Phillies, and then a little Ryan Reckley to 50. Daniel Vasquez, Kansas City Chiefs, or Kansas City Chiefs, Kansas City Royals, sorry. Crystal. Pujols. 299. Wow, look at that. Bobby Witt Jr. 55 out of 75. Beautiful. Crystal with the Royals. Very, very nice. Christian Hernandez prospect there for the Cubs. To 250. And Amador. All right, next four, guys.
Alrighty, guys. Last four boxes here. Here we go, last four. Henry Davis blue to 150. That's a nice one right there to start us off. Blue, uh, that is uh, Pirate Steven. Colas blue to 150 as well for the White Sox win to Rob. We got Edison Paulino. We got Ricardo Cabrera. To 299, Jordan Lawler, Julio, Reggie Crawford for the San Francisco Giants. Giants, that's James. He's a first rounder, I believe. Jose Miranda to 199. West Cath for the White Sox. Eric Brown Jr. Jose Miranda. Warming Burn Abel. Christian Pache. Zavala. Then we got a Albert Pujols, number to 50. Redemption. George Valera to 150 UFO. Nice one there for the Guardians, Matthew. I think this one might have had an extra auto, no? Let me double check. So let's see, it should be eight total. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, this one had an extra auto. I think the redemption was not really supposed to be there. Let's take a look. Let's see if it's a big one. Prospective royalty. Last time I pulled prospective royalty, I believe it was a Jackson Chirio. Wow, no, it's Eli De La Cruz. Very nice. Cincinnati Reds going to DY. There you go. It's a little extra auto right there. De Los Santos. Brooks Lee. And Savala to 75. Felix Valerio. 
Tamar Johnson blue. Simone Huang to two ninety nine. Mason Hour. All right, last box here, guys. Good luck. West Calf. James Wood. Castillo. Luis Gonzalez for the Orioles, Zachary with that one. Joe Ryan for the Minnesota Twins. That's D.Y. to 25. Wonder Franco, Global Impact. I shot one more auto and I think it might be a color, guys. Yep. Don Calm to 150. Blue. Gold Hunter Green for the Red. Red's having a great break. Alrighty guys, so there you go, quick little recap right here. I'll top load all these right now. But some nice cards, some good colors of olive gold right there. And of course we ended up with nice Henry Davis too, but a blue. De La Cruz, Roderick. Uh, Gutierrez, Harry Ford. Noel. I think our biggest hit though is definitely this Bobby Witt though. Pretty solid one right there. So appreciate it, guys. Number 9 and 10 is in the store. JaspiesCaseBreaks.com.